Oh, finally, tonight we look at the famous veils of Veronica. They show the face of Christ after being used to wipe the face of Jesus when he fell while carrying the cross all the way to Calvary. EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief Alan Holdred has more from Rome. There are two veils of Veronica in Italy that can help us decipher the true face of Jesus. One veil is kept under lock and key in St. Peter's Basilica. It's shown from the balcony above the statue of St. Veronica once a year on the fifth Sunday of Lent, but is otherwise kept in a chapel within the pillar. The face of Christ and the devotion to the face of Christ, which uh, comes from the arrival of the Veronica's veil, which leaves the, the Veronica, the, the woman who wiped Christ's face on the road to Calvary, and the cloth that has Jesus' face imprinted on it, uh, really begins to circulate in the 1100s. We begin to hear about it, see about we hear about it, and it, um, it, it's exhibited in St. Peter's as of basically the Middle Ages, so 1100s, 1200s, you begin to see it, th this idea of an actual image of Jesus' face. The second veil is hidden away not far from Rome in Italy's central Abruzzo region. It's always on display behind the altar of the Basilica Shrine of the Holy Face in the little known town of Manopello. The fine cloth of the veil has no equal. It's made of byssus, also known as sea silk, filaments produced by a certain type of Mediterranean mollusk. The material, just as the image imposed upon it, surprisingly changes before your eyes, depending on the light. Scientists have found no trace of pigment, ink, or paint on the cloth. Christ's face is simply there. And then uh, to confirm or to assist the image of the um, face of the Veronica, then we have the face of the Shroud of Turin, which is this negative image in the shroud that, 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 that contains Jesus' body. And that really goes on a pretty regular display in the 1400s. So we have an image that, that, that it turns out that the image that the Christians worked their way towards in the bulk of Christian art is very similar to the image of the man of the shroud and the image of the man of the veil. The similarity is uncanny. In fact, if one were to place one image on top of the other, they would perfectly coincide. The shroud is highly protected and conserved in a temperature and air-controlled case in Turin's cathedral. Because of its uniqueness and importance, the shroud is only displayed on rare occasions. Rome's Pontifical Regina Apostolorum University has a copy of the shroud on permanent display. Photo document where the grayscale is inverted so that the photo negative is the positive image. Secondly, the shroud contains three-dimensional information. And so we were able to reproduce a statue of this man, the cadaver as it laid in the tomb, based on information in a two-dimensional cloth that is unlike any other document in the history of the world. There is no paint anywhere on the shroud. We were looking for that. In 1978, an elite team of scientists came to Italy to study the shroud to answer just this question. What formed the image on the shroud? They found out that there is no paint, no pigment, inorganic or no organic, no varnish, no dye, and get this, no directionality, no brush strokes whatsoever. Whatever this is, this is not human artwork. If science were to prove that the Shroud of Turin wasn't made by human hands and that the man depicted died in the first century in the Holy Land, the question of the first images would be resolved. In Rome, Alan Holdren, EWTN News Nightly. An incredible story. Thank you, Alan.